welcome to part three in the series and we're gonna begin with setting up the character um, what we're gonna do is the first part we'll get him to move around and spawn so we can take control of him and then we'll proceed to doing his character attack combos and skills and whatever so to begin let's go into the content here third person VP select blueprints and you want to duplicate this character third person character we we'll call it warrior underscore bp I'm gonna move this guy into my warrior folder the reason why I duplicate him is so we have all this movement logic Oop, minimized it. Okay. here I'm just gonna move this up because we're gonna be using these quadrants to divide the uh, combo system damage uh, input output and I'm also going to delete the jump because I'm not going to be showing anything to do with jumping only with the uh, space bar will be used for dashing instead so I'll compile that I'll go into the viewport, select the mesh and switch it to Paladin Care now what we need is animation blueprints and blend space 1D so let's make these here select in anim instance and Paladin call this warrior underscore abp and now we need the blend space 1d call it warrior underscore blend space in this blend space I'm gonna need the idle and the run the one not with the great sword because I provide you guys with these great sword animations too but that's gonna be the alternate mode so we'll tackle the shield and sword first then the great sword so let's get his idle and his run animation. Now he's running on a on a line, but we don't need that. So we're gonna go here in root motion, click enable root motion, and select anim first frame. He's kind of not running in a straight line, but I think it has to do with the animation more than anything. So we'll leave it for we'll leave it be like this. It'll do the trick. Now back into the warrior blueprint, we'll set up his animation blueprint compile and I'm gonna go here in warrior animation blueprint and I'll make a state machine I'm gonna call this locomotion now we need a slot node you'll see this uh, later we're gonna use all the attack uh, animation clips and we're gonna make them play on this guy through the slot node so click the magnifying glass add slot call it body and in the drop down you select body and you connect all of these nodes together in locomotion you need a new state and you're gonna call it run and we're gonna plug in his blend space in there we'll promote this to a variable called speed and now in the event graph type is valid connect these two wires together and these two here now what you need is get velocity and you also need to get vector length oh, vector there vector length you take the speed set and connect the two green wire, uh, dots together and connect that to is valid you compile and like move the speed and it starts to run Oh, there seems to be an error in locomotion. Oh, I forgot to connect these together. There we go. So we got him moving. Now we need to control him. We also need to spawn him. So we're going to go to widget and stat warrior. Here the go button. We're going to view its functionality. And we don't need this print string no more. What you need is spawn actor from class. You need a player controller set show mouse cursor because we're gonna hide the mouse also we need possess here you can select warrior so you got your warrior blueprint that's gonna spawn and you'll possess it and you'll also hide the mouse another thing is type remove and you'll see remove from parent this is to hide the widget 
that allows you to select the warrior and show stats. Connect the buttons function here. And spawn transform. Go make transform. Now we need to find the location and rotation for him. So when he spawns, he'll be facing a certain area and he'll be spawned at a specific location. To do that, we're going to go back to the map. And here in this level, there's the target point. Now, every time I press play, the character would spawn facing the wall. So with this, I'll type in 180 right there. But that's going to be in the stat warrior widget. So I need to get these measure these uh, coordinates and put them in the XYZ. So I got 23350. So I'll put those in also. 350 and here 180. You go with based on what you need. So I can compile that and see the result. So he spawned, I took control of him and I'm running around. Yeah, he runs kind of strange. So what he's missing now are his weapons, his sword and his shield. And what we're going to do next is we're going to set up his, his two weapons and then we're going to make his attack combos. Now what we're going to do is we're going to be adding props to the warrior character and we're going to put a sword, a shield, and a great sword. So first thing we need to do is we go into his animation blueprint we need to access the skeleton here put animation to none so he stops moving and you're gonna notice the objects are gonna be out of scale when I'm gonna put them on him but we're gonna fix that in his blueprint so we need to take his right hand and add socket and I'll call this sword right click it again add preview asset and type in sword so you see it's completely out of scale but all I need right now is to position this at the correct place and we'll scale it up afterwards okay that's kind of looking good I guess I'll leave it for now then I'm gonna go to his left hand add a socket and call it shield there's no need to actually put the object in right now because it's way too tiny I tested it out already so we're gonna leave it out for now now the third socket we're gonna need is on his back we're gonna place the great sword here because in the animation he reaches out on his back to get the sword so you go add socket on spine too and we'll call it great sword just move it back a bit And we're going to need another one on the side of his hip over here. So on spine, add socket. Actually, maybe to. No, his hips on the ground, so yeah, to spine, I guess. Add socket, and we'll call it sheath. Even though we don't have a sheath mess, this is just so that when he switches mode, the sword has a place to go. So we'll modify the sword after in terms of rotation and position. Now that we have that, we'll go into the warrior BP go in his viewport and you click on him and here for the animation blueprint set it to none and compile it we don't want him moving as we set these things up now in add component type static static mesh we'll call this one sword and here type in sword select it and what you need to do is drag it right here under mesh then you can duplicate this and call it shield duplicate that call it great sword and duplicate that one more time call it sheath so what we need is sword here the socket set it to sword and zero out all this rotation translation now that we have this, we could scale this up to let's say about 2.5. So now it's scale is better. What the reason why it's not part of the mesh to begin with is this way you can swap weapons. Like in game, you can swap them around. So if you if I wanted to replace this with a mace, 
I could. But if it was part of the mesh, then I, w I don't think I would be able to do that because you would have to swap mesh. Because your mace and your sword look different. But if it was texture, it would be okay. Now for the shield, here we're going to get the shield. And socket. I'll put it to shield and zero out location and rotation. Uh, here I'm gonna put it two times bigger, no, four times, even more, no. eight times, okay, I'll put it to seven. I'm gonna position this correctly. Okay, well, it's kind of floating, but... It's okay, and it's inverted. There we go. Ideally, what's gonna happen is, hang on, let me just see this. Okay, so what's gonna happen is when you're gonna switch modes, he's gonna put the sword on the side of his hip, and he's gonna draw the great sword from his back. So for the great sword, type in great sword. This is gonna be ginormous, and then parent socket, great sword. Zero, zero out location and ro rotation again. So it's pretty huge. We're gonna need to scale this down a bit. So I'll put it to 0 0.75. Yeah, it looks good. Now for the sheath. We're gonna use the sword mesh again. And if I remember well, we put 2.5 for the scale. In the socket, I'll go sheath. The reason why it's there is when you uh, sheath the sword, we're gonna make this one visible. Otherwise, throughout the throughout the time he's holding it, it's gonna be invisible. Okay. Now I'm not gonna position them really really correctly right now because I'm recording and I don't want you guys to just wait and do nothing so what I'll do is I'll show you here if you click on the skeletal mesh and then instead of animation blueprint select the asset and then in the asset oh, click the down arrow that's strange animation asset oops okay so animation asset animations to play none oh that's really strange I've never had this problem Oh, so you hold it and click. Okay. Really weird. What we need to do is draw a sword or sheath sword. Let me find the animation here. Oh, there's a draw sword too. If I compile this, you should keep doing it. So you see the location at which he's drawing from. Ideally, you would want the hilt to be there. Same thing goes for his uh, great sword. So if I go back to the animation here and I select draw great sword. Oh, right on the spot. Let me compile that and see. Yeah, his hand pretty much lands on it. It just needs to be a bit higher. And we can put this to none again by using animation blueprint. So this stuff is pretty much set. What we need to do is take the sheath of the sword right here and put it to hidden in game I'm gonna test him out okay so it's hidden he's not moving because the animation uh, blueprint isn't there but I'll plug that in back into warrior BP and select warrior animation blueprint let's see him run around There's a little camera bug, and I'll, I'll show a small fix for that, too. So, now we have the character's prop set up. So, he's holding his sword, his shield, and he's got his great sword, and he has an invisible sword on the side. What's going to happen is when he pulls out his great sword, the, the great sword mesh will disappear. And we're going to swap that basic sword for a great sword, and we're going to put the shield on his back. It's going to happen pretty quickly. There's a small part that I missed out. 
and he needs one more weapon. He needs a great sword in his right hand. So once he reaches out to get this one, we're gonna turn this one invisible, and the one in his hand, we're gonna turn that visible. So to get that working, what we're gonna do is take great sword and duplicate that and call it great sword underscore on. Then for the socket, you choose sword and zero everything out except for the rotation of the set. Here, you put it to 180. Now it's in his hand, and I'm going to go down in rendering and set it to hidden in game. Another thing, I'm going to click on this guy and give him back his animation blueprint. So I'm going to stop the video here so it doesn't exceed too much in time. And in the next video, we're going to make him switch these two weapons, the short sword and the great sword. So see you in the next video.